Hey there, and thank you for joining me on another weekly lesson. Only this week I wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, if you were able to join us last week for my launch party in Denver as we set this gift free, as we, as we position this book to fly, we had the most incredible launch party. And for this last week, I've had to sit with just this overwhelm of love and joy and support that quite honestly, I don't know that I've ever felt before. And so I, I really wanted to take a second and I wanted to say thank you. I, I wanted to share with all of you, again, to those who could make it and for many of you who couldn't, my dearest, most heartfelt gratitude for your love and your support and your belief in not only me, but this message, the, the gift that God had given me, the message that he has given me is now lighting this world on fire and is positioning people everywhere to dream again, to dream with God and to play a role in actively pulling heaven to this earth. And, and so I wanted to take a little bit of time to thank you. And, I, and then I wanted to wrap it into this week's lesson of hope because if you can get this lesson if you can understand it maybe not even at a cognitive level but at such a much deeper level i believe it could be the impetus for you to get started i think that now standing where i'm standing and and holding this book in my hands and having the launch party at one of the most beautiful venues in Denver, Colorado, which is the manifestation of a dream come true. I, I sit and I'm able to say, I don't know why more people don't follow their dreams because everything you're wanting and everything that you're craving and everything that you're desiring is on the other side of saying yes to the thing that's on the inside of you. And then as I reflect on the journey and the hours spent in pursuit, hours and hours, the tears, the fear, the worry, the doubts, the worldviews that you have to demolish, all the unknowns that you, that you move into, all of the questions that you ask, I'm, I'm instantly also remembered, remember that, yeah, this is why people don't do it because it is so dang hard and it's worth it. And so I just, from the bottom of my heart, wanted to say thank you. I want to say thank you. I appreciate you. I, I needed every single one of you on this journey to make this thing come true. Now, the reason that I wrote this book was for the same reason that most of you want to chase your dreams, right? Like there's something in you that there is this vision, this idea, this thing that just you keep circling and you keep coming back to over and over and over again. And, and you live most of your life running from it or hiding from it or doing what you can to not feel it or think about it. And then at some point in time, you look at yourself in the mirror and you go, I can't not do this. I have to do this. And, and that was my journey with this book of, of I felt God's lead and prompt to have me write this forever. I mean, probably a decade. And it wasn't until I surrendered and finally said yes, that I was able to see the hope of what I had wanted all along, right? It, it was, and, and that, that's really what I think boldness is all about, right? And, and when you consider your dreams and how big and daunting and massive and scary and unknown they can feel, we think that we're the only ones. And, and I'm here to remind you that, that you're not the only one, right? Like if you've downplayed your dreams, if you've worried about them, if you found yourself in a place of fear, a state of doubt for some time, like that doesn't make you crazy. It makes you human, right? And so that's why boldness is so important in your first step to manifesting your dreams is because boldness is not courage. It's not like, oh, I feel strong and that I'm capable of this and that I know that I can do this. No, boldness is simply a willingness to say yes. It's just a, a willingness, even when your ego in your brain doesn't want to, something in you knows that you just can't not. That's what boldness is. It's simply a willingness to start and it's a willingness to not quit. Okay, 
that's why I wrote this was because I, I finally stepped into just saying yes, because I believe that everything that we're wanting, that the impossible being possible, that bringing heaven to this earth and the solutions to life's greatest problems, like the legit solutions to some of the world's greatest problems are not found out there. They're, they're not out there. They're in here. They're in you. That our dreams, the manifestation of our dreams, us having the boldness to, to take what's in us and get it out of us into the world around us, that that is key. And so I wrote this as a wake up call to create greater alignment for each and every one of us so we could actually start living our lives in light of the dreams that God gave us instead of resisting them or downplaying them or watering them down or looking for the path of least resistance, but to actually wake us up and to realize that it's not that life is getting in the way of us living our dreams, it's that we don't have a, a dream louder than this life to live for. And so I committed four years of my life to getting this to the point that it is today. And this is hope. This is what we want to talk about today is, is hope, a lesson in hope, because I think we all could use some more hope. And, and hope is really interesting. And, and, and here I stand at a different vantage point, right? But I've been where you are. I've been years before even being willing to start my dream. I've been right smack dab in the middle of saying yes. I've been in the fear and the worry and the doubt, and doubting myself and doubting God and doubting people. Like I've been through all of it and I still have so much further to go, but I stand at a vantage point of understanding hope. And this is the gift that I want to give you today because I believe that you need hope. I believe that all of us need more hope today, right? And if you look at the definition of hope, this is really interesting. Hope by definition is a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. A feeling of expectation and a desire for a certain thing to happen. Most of us, if you're like me or where I was when I thought about hope, um, hope to me felt like something that we just make up in our own minds to make us feel better. Right, like it's about almost this daydreaming concept of my current reality sucks so much that I'm gonna just kind of like pretend th that life could be better, but reality says it can't. And so I'm just gonna live in this la la land and feel better about it. And like, almost like I'm thinking positively about potential only negating the problems of today. And which is why I never felt hope. Right, I was so much more of a realist. And I think that that's where most of us start is that like, well, we're, we're realists. No, all of us are created as dreamers. We are made in the image of God. And if he is a creator and a dreamer, so are we, right? We teach ourselves how to be realists. We teach ourselves how to be negative. We teach ourselves to look at the glasses as half empty. But today I want you to help you understand what hope actually is so we can live hope. Because that is our commission, right? Especially as a believer, right? We are to be the salt of the earth. We are to be the light in the darkness. And most of us are very uncomfortable when it gets dark. Why? Because we've forgotten our role. We've forgotten our identity. We've forgotten the place that we are to take, which is to be the light. And if there is no darkness, there is no light. And so you have to have dark to be the light. We are to be the light. We are to live hope, okay? But here's what I want you to understand with hope. When we really look at what hope is, this definition, it's not something that has to do with future longing. That's not where our hope comes from. Hope is not a made up forecast for tomorrow. That is not where hope is built. That's why most of us are probably disappointed or frustrated or depleted. Hope is based on past truth. This is what I want you to hear. Hope is based in fundamental foundational truth that's built in the past that says God is, has been good, which means God is good, which means God will be good. Hope is built from understanding and looking back and realizing that truth was and is 
and forever will be. It's not just about potential. It's not just about um, this desire that maybe something could be better even when the reality says it can't be. And even when I think about my past and all the negative things that have happened, you're missing it. Hope is built in the fact that what was and is and forever will be, that God is good. Okay, so our hope is not based on what might happen. That's faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's faith. That's totally different, right? The faith then, as I've talked about once, faith is required to follow our dreams. In order to follow our dreams, we have to have faith in the future, in potential, in our dreams. Faith, in order to move in faith, has to be rooted and grounded in trust, right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Why? Because if we tried to lean in our own understanding, we would never get out of the boat. We would never trust people again. We would find reasons not to trust God. We would never chase our dreams. Why? Because they blow our minds. Because our dreams take us to places that we've never been. Because they lead us into the unknown. Because, because it's so much bigger than us. And so if we lean on our own understanding, the answer would be no all day long. That, that's just the reality, right? But what we have to understand is that in order to get out of the boat to follow our dreams, we have to have faith. That's not hope. It's faith to go where we've never gone, which is birthed in trust that God has always been good. He is good and forever more than will be good. And when I get rooted and grounded in trust, trust in myself, trust in God, building that relationship that most of us don't spend enough time building, then the byproduct of that is hope. Hope is a byproduct of a person walking in faith, rooted in trust, reveling in the unveiling of hope. Hope, therefore, is not about the future. That's faith. Hope is built in the trust that says it is and was and forever will be. So I have hope, not based on circumstances, not based on short my shortcomings, not based on my capabilities, not based on that everything's going to make sense because the reality is none of it will. None of it will. And our dreams are actually here to defy and shape and change and manifest something better than what we currently have. And that is built in my hope. And when I have hope, it fuels my faith, which strengthens my trust, which only creates greater hope, which fuels my faith, which deepens my trust, and on and on and on we go. So what does that say? It tells us and confirms that yes, we all need hope. We, we all need hope for a brighter tomorrow. We need hope for current circumstances. We need hope, right? But we don't want false hope. We want true hope. We want something that we can actually stand on, but hope is a byproduct. Hope is a byproduct not of wishful, hopeful longing. Hope is a byproduct of moving in faith, grounded in trust, and like a wake-up call. Hope, therefore, is exactly what I saw at our launch party was when you stand around and you look at, I have hope for where we're going. I have hope for what this can actually do. I am energized. I am empowered. I will keep going. I now have renewed purpose and sense of direction and clarity. Why? Not because I'm faking it. Not because I'm just crossing my fingers. It's because I stepped out in faith. I stepped out and towards something that I knew was in me. I brought something to life. I took what was in me, what God gave me. I brought it to life. I trusted myself. I learned to trust God in the process. I learned to trust people. I learned to trust it all, not because everybody is perfect or going to do all the right things, but because I knew that I needed to understand trust to trust in him, God, in all things and lean not on my own understanding because let's face it, I knew my own understanding would keep me where I've always been, not take me to where I've never gone. Then hope was a byproduct. It was the beautiful gift that was the outcome of a journey of faith, trust, 
outcome. It's the outcome, right? And, and this is what I wanted to share with you today, right? Is, is that so often, you know, we, we want the outcome. We want more peace. We want more love. We want more fulfillment. We want more joy. We want more connection. We want more of these things. And for that, that's beautiful and that's fair. We want to see the manifestation of our dreams. God wants that for us too, right? In Ephesians 4 verse 20, it says, Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all of this. He will achieve, listen to these words, infinitely more than your greatest request. Infinitely more than your greatest request. Your most unbelievable dream, he will give you achieve infinitely more than your most unbelievable dream and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all, all of them. He will ex exceed it, right? But most of us don't even give him the benefit of the doubt. Most of us don't position ourselves for this. Most of us don't even uh, allow ourselves to get out of the boat to let God wow us because we are so fearful and worried right? And it tells me that if you are fearful and worried about what could happen, you know how faith could work. You just have it on the wrong subject matter. It just needs to be redistributed and put somewhere else. Your attention needs to be put somewhere else, right? So if this is a byproduct, right, that he can do infinitely more than your greatest request, the most un unbelievable dream and exceed your wildest expectations. This is at the end of this chapter, right, which tells us we need to go back earlier and we need to look at where we start. Okay, so if you go back just a few verses beforehand, it says, I pray that he would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and his explosive power. Unveil within you. Your dreams is this power. He wants to unveil within you his heaven on earth, like our ability to bring heaven on earth is on the inside of you. The solutions to the problems that we're seeing in the world today don't exist out there. They are in here. He's put them in you. Why? Because he wants to work with you to see the fulfillment of these things happen. Why? Because he wants to partner with you. He wants to be with you. He wants to commune with you. He wants to wow you, right? But here's what's really interesting. It says, then... By constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside of you and the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. Then you will be empowered to discover what every Holy One experiences, the great magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all dimensions. This is the instructions. This is the clear instructions on how we live hope, okay? How we live hope, it says, then by constantly using your faith, constantly using your faith. It doesn't say sometimes. It doesn't say when things only make sense. It doesn't say when, when everything is lined up. It doesn't, it doesn't say those things. It says then by constantly using your faith in the midst of the hard times, in the midst of the unknown, in the midst of the obstacles, in the midst of the dark, in the midst of it all. We are to be the light in the dark. It says that even in around our enemies that he will make a table for us. We have to start stop thinking that life is just going to be handed to us because we believe in God or because we're accomplishing our dreams. It won't. We need to fight for it. We need to strengthen ourselves. We need, it's about our character building and our resolve by constantly using your faith. The life of Christ will be released in you and the resting place of his love, trust. The resting place of his love is trust. Will become the very source and root of your life. This is what I want you to hear. When you are constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released inside of you. The dream will be released it will be released. When you walk in faith, your dream will be released. The life of Christ will be released in you and the resting place of his love, trust, will be the source and root of your life. 
then you will be empowered to discover that every holy uh, everyone experiences the great magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all of its dimensions. Hope. You will be empowered. Hope is empowerment. Hope is empowerment to keep going, to keep fanning the flame, to keep doing the thing that God has asked you to do. This is what this is all about. This proves what I'm suggesting to you today, which is being on this other side now of having so much hope, feeling so hopeful right now, not just because of what I believe is in front of us, but because of what has always been, what currently is, is giving me hope in what is the package and the gift I want to give you today is by constantly using your faith. It will release the dreams that are on the inside of you. It will give you a resting place and an opportunity to finally breathe, to finally trust, to finally let go and surrender. And when you do, you will be so empowered to do it again and do it again and do it again because you can't not. This is the gift of hope. It is a byproduct of you walking in faith day in and day out, day in and day out, as you release the gift that God has given you, as you release your identity and your purpose and your dreams, and you trust that you abide in his resting place and you know that the empowerment and the love and the joy and the peace and everything you're looking for will be given to you. Why? Because you were faithful what he gave you. This is the gift of hope. This is the lesson in hope that I want to teach you today. And may this lesson of hope, may the manifestation of this book not just be about this book, but about the release of this message and a greater voice that says, if it's in us, it is possible if we will walk in faith, abide in trust, and live hope for the world to see. Oh, and of course, don't forget... If you want to join into our weekly encouraging text message marketing, please text DREAMNOW, all capital letters, to 22999.